I upgraded to 2023.6 this week and found that this update left me with some work to do. So I wanted to cover each of these that popped up on my system and how to fix them. Oh, and that command line one, you'll want to stick around for that one because the update for that didn't go so smooth. I think going forward, I'm gonna to try to do these videos after each of the releases to cover all the things that might pop up. As of this recording, I'm actually on 2023.6.1 because until now, I've started making it a habit to wait for that .1 patch before actually upgrading. Thankfully, I didn't have any functionality broken in my smart home, at least not like 2023.5. If I haven't posted the Workday Sensor video, it'll be coming out soon. And if you use the Workday Sensor, you'll want to check that one out. In any case, let's get to fixing these. Let's start with platform support not supported. What the hell is going on here? Is it, is it, am I having a stroke? The first time I read this, I wasn't clear what it was telling me, but now I think I've got it. The version platform for the sensor integration does not support platform setup. So as, what this is telling us is that I've got some sensors that are using the version platform. And a while back, I'm not sure when it was, version moved to the integration panel. So now, of course, all of my version sensors are set up using that version integration. So I guess I've got some that are still in my configuration. And if I flip over to my configuration here in my system monitoring package that has most of these types of sensors in here, you can see where I commented out these that got replaced by that version integration, but I've got this guy right here and I think this is what's causing the issue. So I'm going to go ahead and comment this guy out. I don't even remember what this was used for. And I'm gonna copy this and just do a quick search to see if that shows up anywhere else in any of my other files. And it looks like the only place it shows up is in this package. So we should be able to save this. And now when we restart Home Assistant, this should go away. And I'm just going to leave it there for now. Okay, next up, the speedtest.net integration does not support YAML configuration. This is yet again another one that did move to the integration panel. There it is right there. So I evidently didn't remove it from my YAML configuration. This is one of those that was set up like this. So we're just gonna comment out this right here, save that, and now that one should be fixed as well. Okay, next up, command line YAML configuration has moved. And at first, this one confused me as well. Now, of course, it doesn't break anything right now. Nothing stops working until version 2023.8.0. So we at least have one more release in between now and when it does stop working. But the first time that I saw this, I thought that this meant that they've moved the command line configuration for the sensor to the integration panel. And that is not the case. In fact, if you head over to the integration panel and you go to add a command line, it'll tell you that this device cannot be added from the UI and that you must add it to your configuration.yaml. But what has changed is how these are set up. So this is following a similar pattern to what we've seen so far with templates and the MQTT based entities. So the old style of setting this up looks like this, where we have a platform command line that lives as part of this sensor domain. And what they've done now is created a command line domain. So any of these command line sensors that we've built using the platform command line under sensor, we just have to migrate to the new format. So we need to use this new format right here. And then under that, you define your binary sensor or your cover or a notify entity or a sensor or a switch. So to fix this over here, I'm just going to create now a new sensor here. And I will just move
all of this under there like that. Oh, unique ID. We should make sure that we always have a unique ID. And really and truly, all this sensor does is gets the count of how many lines are in my configuration.yaml files. And the only thing I use that for is tweeting out snarky stuff about how big my configuration is. So now we can get rid of that. I need to make sure that I don't have any more of those in there, because I might. And here's another one. So we're gonna grab all of this, flip back over here, and we're just gonna paste it in here. And I'm actually gonna flip these two just because that's what I do. So now over here, we can comment all of that out. And there we go. We now don't have any more of that platform command line showing up. Now that we've got all of those cleaned up, all we need to do is reboot and make sure that everything has gotten fixed. Ah, crap. Okay, so this didn't go as planned. When I went to restart Home Assistant, it told me that my YAML config was wrong. Turns out for some reason, the new command line setup doesn't follow the same pattern as the recent MQTT and template changes. Maybe there's some reason the dev team haven't shared about why it couldn't follow the same pattern, but I suspect it was that they wanted to see who actually read the documentation. Although honestly, this is not specifically called out in the documentation. So I bet a lot of people are gonna get burned by this one or at least the 7.7% .7 of the user base that is using this integration. Anyway, let me show you what happened. Okay, I'll admit, for this command line change, I just kind of scanned the documentation and then jumped right in, because we've dealt with these types of updates quite a few times over the last 12 months. MQTT went through a similar change, templates went through a change like this as well, and I expect we'll see some others go through a similar change. However, for whatever reason, this command line change didn't follow the same pattern as those other changes. I originally had set this up exactly like we've done with templates, MQTTs, and the others, where we define our new domain, under that we define the type of entity, and then under that we could define all of the entities that belong to that type, where we use a hyphen to differentiate between each new entity. But in this case, that doesn't really work, which is why I was getting that error when I was trying to restart Home Assistant. So instead, we need to define our command line entities like this. So instead of being able to define an entity type and then define all of the entities that belong to that type, we have to define the type each time. So for each sensor, we need a hyphen sensor colon heading, and then under that, we can define the attributes for that. And then if we need an additional one, we have to use the hyphen sensor colon again and then define the attributes under that. Really and truly, it doesn't make that big of a difference. It's just one of those things that's going to have to be remembered now because for whatever reason, command line doesn't follow the same pattern as the others. And I went back and looked at the documentation and as of recording this video, none of the examples showed how to define multiple entities under this new command line setup. So it was easy to assume that it was gonna follow the same pattern as all of those that we've done before. So if you're trying to migrate your command line entities over to this new format and you're getting errors and not quite understanding what's going on, this is what's happening. Now, it is a little bizarre that it doesn't follow the same format, so I wouldn't be surprised if it gets updated in the future just to keep things consistent inside of Home Assistant, but if not, then it's just one of those things we're going to have to remember. Anyway, now once we've made this change and I've saved it, I can restart Home Assistant and when it comes back up, you can see that now all of my repairs that were previously listed here have disappeared, which means we can call this a success. And that's it for this video. Again, be careful with that command line one because it doesn't act like the similar domains and platforms we've recently migrated to the new setup. Some of these though were self-inflicted because I'm not good at going back and removing old YAML. But in any case, if you see them, now you know how to fix them. Which means we can all get back to automating the boring stuff.